Ja. Right, welcome to the IKEA flat pack round house. Today I've chosen the Iron Age door option which is wider than the Bronze Age. Let's go inside and have a look. The round house is made of eight sheets of plywood joined together with wooden panels. They're eight by four sheets of 12 mil ply. They're bolted with joiners, so if you pan round and have a look. That's it. Into a long strip and then they're bent round to join the door frame. The door frame is made out of um, ash, it's quite strong. And because you've bent a strip of wood round, it creates a tension band so it stays rigid. Because of the height of humans sitting on hay bales, we've had to add a six inch extension to the height to lift it up. So I'll show you this. So the basic structure is a long flat band We've worked it out to seven and a half meters, which gives you a circumference of around 22 and a half meters. So if two people sit to every meter, we should be able to sit 40 something people on hay bales all the way around here. The roof is similar to a yurt, or the structure of it is. When I originally built this, I used roofing batten because it's cheap and affordable and easy to get hold of. And I joined the tops with uh, wire to secure them and then tiled it with 4mm ply. But this year, I wanted it to be much easier to put up. So I've used, a, same as a yurt, I've used a cartwheel in the roof. This time I've used a steel cartwheel. And I've used ash poles that slot into the tubular structure at the top there. That was really quick to put up. I think two of us put it up in about three hours to get all the roof members on. To cover it, I've used four mil ply. It's nice and light. It will bend to the curve of the roof. And I start at the bottom with um, two foot by four foot panels and then go up about oh, two rows and then I go down to one foot by two foot panels because the original one had unequal spacing in the roof all of the panels are unequal length so if you're building this think about that if you get the spacings accurate the tiles could practically be numbered by the rows you're using I've also added a window in the entrance and this is to let the light in. I've also used polycarbonate for the door also to let the light in. This is because it gives you a chance for people to use the space inside here rather than it being completely dark. Realistically you could cover a large area using this polycarbonate plastic you could use a thinner grade of plastic, like a greenhouse polycarbonate. The whole thing here, and I originally built it using roofing batten, for a, a building in the size come in just under a thousand pounds if you sit down. You need an awful lot of five mil, um, four mil plywood, so you have to do your research and find a decent supplier. You can get 10 foot by five foot plywood in 12 more sheets but it's too big for the size of car I've got so I couldn't move it. But I thought it was an interesting building and it's a very practical building and I call it a flat pack roundhouse because 
When it's all taken apart, you just end up with eight and a quarter sheets of plywood leaning against the garage wall and a pile of tiles. The roof poles are probably about the most awkward thing to store and the cartwheel is, but most of it packs down to nothing. It would all fit in a transit van. The only problem is it takes about two days to erect and, uh, and it does help if it's not pouring the rain. So, if you watch next year, and we'll do show you the modifications to this where I've added to it. We're going to go outside now and just look at the joining panels and different things on the roof. Right, we're on the outside now, and I'm showing you. This is the roof timbers where they come out. Realistically, the further out the roof comes, the less problem you've got with rain going under the edge of the plywood. And you can also see on the wall here, you can see the joining plate. I've used a, I think it's an 8mm bolt on each side. I've used the same 12mm ply to join it. And I've used this to anchor the roof tension onto the side of the um, wall is the band forms the band forms round the outside and that produces a, a rigid structure and then when the roof is added it tries to push out like this so you need to make some way of attaching your roof timbers to the side of the building so it can't just drop the middle cone apart from that there's no serious bits of uh, engineering or anything it's only the cartwheels engineered you don't need to go that exotic. But I just thought it was interesting. I wanted to share it with you because I couldn't see anything on YouTube or the internet about circular structures made like this out of plywood. It's quite an ancient design, starting right from the beginning of time people lived in round houses. And they were highly developed through prehistory and probably by the time the Romans arrived they were quite amazing buildings and just faded away really in this country. So anyway, I look forward to see if anybody else comes up with any ideas. Thank you. One of the important modifications I possibly would suggest is when you build your entrance, make it a little bit higher. I chose this height because it's the Iron Age option, but maybe you should choose a slightly higher option from the IKEA catalogue. So we've modified it with this 20th century phone to avoid this. So, I hope that helps. An interesting problem was trying to have fire in here because I'm used to roundhouses which ha have thatched roofs and the smoke will go up through the thatch and the smoke will pass away without any problem. So I thought the gaps in the roof here would have the same effect but it doesn't work like that. So we tried all different options, small fires, having bigger and bigger holes in the roof which kind of helped but you didn't actually get warm. So we found a happy balance with, do you want to point that? With a very small fire in small sticks but kept to open so it combusts very quickly. A smoke hood leading to a chimney. You still need some ventilation in the roof to let the secondary smoke out. So we've been experimenting with sizes it seemed to work. We seemed to get a, quite a nice effect. So with the door closed and the right amount of fire in the small sticks was most efficient. We actually got very warm in here. Had plenty of light by raising the fire bowl up so the light was coming out horizontally and it worked fantastically. So the next thing we need to do next year is have a, a cowling on the chimney that will turn to favour which direction the wind's blowing to help draw the smoke out. But really, it worked fantastic. So the structure is fairly uh, windproof and we had a problem that we still needed to let air come in for the fire to burn. So we've got the gaps over the door frame to let the air in because it's not where somebody would sit, so it helps. Everywhere else we've packed stuff in to seal it. I mean, I'm only putting this building up for five days, once a year, but every year I do a modification and uh, we'll include some film in here. 
A bizarre thing about this building is the acoustics in here are amazing. It's almost like the Whispering Tower or the uh, Whispering Gallery in St Paul's Cathedral because you've got the parabolic shape of these wooden boards. They reflect the sound out. So when the bands play or the storytellers talk, you don't need amplification and it gets quite loud in here. Anyway, thank you for looking and I look forward to hearing from any really good ideas. Bye.